Zvz manic it is. Yes, I really do love Zvz to cast. Never had to play it. I had the good fortune of not having to play it, but it is is a nightmare, I'm sure, to play. But I just love it. It's it's monkey knife fight. It is monkey knife fight. Just random, not random stuff, but like, it's absolutely brutal. You miss one thing, one minor detail, an overlord out of position, and you are going to lose. I think, I'll, I'll, I'll explain why ZVZ is such a cool matchup after I've introduced the players. We should probably do the formal part first. So, in the top left position, the green Zerg player, it's Rain Man. And in the bottom and right, playing for Druids as the blue Zerg, we have Dax. Now... I'm going to touch a little bit more on what you said because it was a really accurate point. It can seem really unpredictable ZBZ. And the reason it's so difficult for non-Zerg players to understand this matchup is because there's a real subtle thing in scouting. And that is you have to look at the work account, how many lava are banked up, as opposed to just looking for straight buildings, which most, pro which most players are used to really spotting. Like, oh, he's got a Stargate, he's going for this. Oh, he's got X number of gateways. But in ZVZ, it's like he's got two hatcheries and a spawning pool. He could either be getting more drones out, but looking to take a third, or he could be about to flood you with speedlings. And it'd be really difficult if you don't look closely to differentiate between the two. And we're seeing our first divergence here in the builds. Rainman going for the 14 pool and Drax going for the fast expand. So already seeing some differences. Dax's got to play very defensive now, look to get that baning nest up as soon as possible. And Rainman's got to put a little bit of pressure on so he doesn't fall behind. Yeah, this is ultimately the. It's fine to put on a little bit of pressure at this point because you can do really well. The other thing that you've got to be cautious of as well is even though that natural hatchery is coming down, it's not uncommon to see a player just fake that, get down two queens, and then just pump zerglings. Like huge numbers of them off of two bases. And unless you get banings down, you won't defend it flat out, which is why if you get down an early hatchery, I'm always in favor of getting down quite early baling nests. Hmm. Yeah, you really need to get that banning nest down. Oh, yeah. It's, well, you, no matter what you do, you first expand, you have to get that banning nest. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing with the potential of masses of links in your base, and you're just going to get swarmed out of the game. You will. So, as we see now, Rayman just starting up his first gas. The Overlord floating their way in for both players, getting a look, saying, hey, he's got a hatchery at his natural. Hey, he's got a hatchery at his natural. And both thinking they're safe. And... Yeah, this should now just be all about whether these initial Zerglings get to do much damage. I don't... I Actually, no, the Overlord would have seen it, just. So, this could come as a bit of a surprise, and straight away we see Dax getting down his Baning Nest. Four Zerglings. Four Zerglings plus two Queens will defend six Zerglings. Yeah, easily. I mean, the, the, those Queens are such a defensive stalwart. They're, they're the staple part of the defense in the early game, and... I've been watching a few games recently where people are going up to six queens and using them to defend and using Sim City to stop the surround by greater Zergling numbers. Yeah, that works really well. I wouldn't recommend it on Aklon Waste though, just because the ram's too wide oh, and God, you can't no. get creeps it, about there. But it's far too wide open. Yeah. On bases, on oh, sorry, on bases on maps like Daybreak, for example, it can work really well though. Um, double Evo, spine crawler, queens blocking off all the other gaps and just text straight up to roaches. Yeah, it works a tree. Sometimes you even see the spine being put um, two squares away from the hatchery, and then you put the queen right between the two, so you, yep. the zerglings can't get the full surround in here. It really, it, it makes a huge difference. It does, and it's it's one of those things which can be really nice, but currently Dax is really not in much problems. He's got his baneliness down stupidly earlier than that of Rain Man's, and he's also got Zergling Speed coming down at pretty much identical times, and actually, no, exactly identical, but about half a second, so that in itself is always fun to see. And in terms of going into this game further, it looks like both players just happy to drone. Rain Man is getting eight Zerglings out, so going to try and poke a bit, but with Baneling's out, he's not going to have any fun getting in there unless he really commits to it. Yeah, and it's... it's Dax has got that edge now. I mean, uh, equal on the speed, Zergling speed. Dax is actually ahead on drones, and he got his Baneling up, nest up first. He's, he's kind of taken the edge in every single aspect of the game. Now, the big question, or not really the big question, is will we see these two go mutalisks? Probably. Let's look at their build. They've both got going up to fourth gas, both getting up their lairs, both haven't spent their gas on anything else yet, have a couple of defensive banelings, and Rainman could potentially try and deal some damage, but he's not going to be able to. 14 more lings on their way out for Dax. He's going to be able to defend this quite comfortably. 
Yeah, and I mean, Zerglings are coming in here, managing to snipe a few drones. Bailing gets detonated, but on Dax's Bailings, and oh god, he's doing a real good job with these links, actually. Oh, good detonation there, though. Yeah, That's that detonation was really nice. Oh, not quite such a nice detonation there, though, on the natural round, but of course, counterattacks are always going to be a threat, and Rayman sending two drones over. <laughs> not quite <sure. laughs> he wasn't sure why they were there either. Drones, what are you doing? Go home, you drunk. <laughs> Combat drones. They just wanted to be. They just wanted to be zerglings. <laughs> Press the wrong button. Oh, but a lot of zerglings are actually streaming into Rayman's base at the moment. This queen gets completely oh. surrounded. Will get taken out. That hurts the production of Rayman. And of course, a lot of drones could potentially start dying here. Lots of mining time wasted, if nothing else. And just all of those things ultimately mean that Dax is getting further and further ahead. Currently, he is a little bit behind in terms of the work account, but his spire um, is also slightly behind. But He's taken map control temporarily. However, Rainman is pumping 22 speedlings out. Yeah, and people think that in Muta versus Muta, the only thing that matters is the Muta count. No, Zergling count matters as well. You've got to be able to put the pressure on and harass bases. And I mean, Dax doesn't really have anything in, at the moment, and he can go and deny that third quite comfortably. Yeah, Dax does not have enough Zerglings to deal with this, or enough Bailings, he's just got the two of them there, which can easily be taken out. But you're quite right, the Zerglings do really matter in Mutual Muta. Not only for whoever has the best ground control, but also if you have Zerglings under a Mutual Muta fight, you are then able to soak up some of the Bouncing Glaive damage and really improve the efficiency at which your own Mutalisks are able to engage. Yeah, it is quite bizarre when you see these Muta versus Muta battles, and then on the ground these Lings are just trying to stand underneath to catch those bounces and soak up the damage. Six meters already on the way out from Rain Man, so he's looking to get the race of the meters underway, and he is in the lead. He is in the lead, and eight meters advantage plus the plus one flyer carapace coming down a couple of seconds early is really going to help. But Dax is coming for a big zergling counter push, but with so many more zerglings and the banings here at the moment for um, Rain Man, he should be pretty comfortable defending this. Now the meters coming in, getting revealed, but all in all, this third base will be able to survive, and that is the key thing. Yeah, that spine crawler didn't even go down. Good pressure though by Dax, but it didn't really achieve too much. Just uh, took some bailings out, and it's time for the overlords to slowly make their way back home. One already going down for Dax, and and he's not even trying to pull these in. They've given no, up on life. <laughs> they're just like, no, not going to work. But now, of course, this mute account is really going to start becoming the key thing in this game. Dax does have the advantage now in terms of the muters, 12 to 10, but this can start fluctuating really quickly. The other key thing to note is about a, a whole minute in game advantage for Rain Man on the plus one carapace. That's huge. Yeah, that is a massive timing window that he should be looking to exploit. As soon as this plus one finishes, he's got to go in. He's got to right, look at the muters, go, oh, no plus one, just go for it. Yeah, and if you don't have the plus one, of course, you take so much more damage because the bounce attacks deal so much more, and it really makes a big difference. But currently, Dax being quite aggressive, and I like this because he does have a mutalisk advantage for the time being, but got to be careful because it's such a small muta flock, a couple of queens on the ground make a massive amount of difference. Yeah, their range DPS is, is so good. And with range seven as well, they just add an extra bit of oomph. No spore crawlers in the third of Rain Man. I'm... I'm He's actually just skipping them entirely. I mean, having said that, though, so thing. Dax. Yeah, Dax this is such a kind of this is such a wild west thing. They're just going, you know, what, I'm going for it. You wanna, you wanna go for me? That's fine. I'm gonna need those drones to mine. Now, of course, plus one carapace is completed now for Rain Man. Not yet done for Dax, but Dax is gonna be able to get in the main base. The muters are way out of position for Rain Man. A queen will definitely fall. A couple of drones should be able to go down as well. And this is the sort of damage you've got to be doing with muters, and it can be very effective. Simultaneously, though, Zergling's pushing in towards the third. Yeah, Zergling's doing some damage. They're going to snipe a queen, and... Oh, Dax was in a bit of trouble there. I thought Rayman had managed to force the engagement because he had them penned into the corner. But uh, these Zerglings have still been taking out more units down in the third, but they're going to be killed off now by the muters, and the two flocks disengage. Now, even though Dax managed to kill a couple of drones, he's still behind by eight workers. And that is quite a large amount, actually, at any stage of a mirror matchup. So this is something now where, obviously, Rayman needs to capitalize on that by getting out as many mutalists as he can. Upgrades are once again equal with 01 on both sides for air. But plus one flyer attack is nine, at least 90 seconds ahead for Rayman compared to Dax. So, yeah, it looks like Dax is really falling behind in his upgrades on the spa. I mean, he's got that plus one armor, but not even thinking about getting any other upgrades. And that is going to prove fatal the longer the game goes on. 
And ultimately, upgrades really can make a huge difference, especially when you're going muter on muter. And the muter counts are exactly equal as well. The only difference currently is going to be just number of muters on the field. The first volley goes off, but it was pretty simultaneously, though. And with the Zerglings underneath, just as we mentioned earlier, the ability to soak up those bouncing glaives makes a massive amount of difference. Looking at the muter count drop, though, Rayman is coming off lots better here. And as the, his opponent's muter flock dies quicker, he is just going to be able to get more and more of a snowball. Yeah, and there we go. Dax GG's out. And I think Rayman had that edge there by...